Hello, 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 and welcome to episode three of CD Review. Uh, this is uh, part of a new series that I'm going to do um, on a look through my library. So um, basically, I'm going to be reviewing or getting through all of the albums I've got on iTunes, which is a, a hell of a task to do, but we'll get through them. But I'll still take any requests, and thank you for those who have messaged me so far, and I'll get through those as well. Today we're talking about Mike Oldfield's Man on the Rocks. Now this is uh, the album that he released last year. Uh, Mike's return of Oldfield to a Virgin branded record label uh, since leaving Virgin in the 1990s. And this is the first album that he's that he released for six years. The, the, the one before that was Music of the Spheres. And it's also the first album in quite a while to feature just pop and rock songs. The other one was Earth Moving in the 80s, uh, which for me anyway, that album was uh, let down by his vocals. This time he's got a whole host of musicians on board. He's got Luke Spiller on vocals. Uh, very, very talented guy. Love his work with the straps and being a, a, a lad from near Derby. I'm also very humbled to have him on this record. And he does a, a brilliant job. Something times you think it's a Luke Spiller, Spiller album. If it wasn't for the you know the traditional Michael Field guitar licks on the Telecaster, then you wouldn't think it was a Michael Field album. So let's have a look at the individual tracks now. Um, it's it's not the songs are perfectly serviceable on this record. It tickles a certain need. Some of them, I feel that they're a little bit undercooked and a little bit bland in some places. Uh, but I really, really like um, the title track. What? Um, so I'm just looking at down at the uh, just refilling my eyes myself here with the. That's right. I, I like the title track as well. Um, my favourite one on the album is Chariots with the um, with just uh, the, the the tones, the guitar tones at the start, the opening guitar tones is is just amazing. Um, a lot of the lyrics um, were uh, taken from his uh, personal experiences recently. Uh, the piece Irene was inspired by Hurricane Irene, which hit the the Harmers in the 2011. Um, the, the the track Moonshine actually um, was a reworking of one of his instrumentals in 1994 so it's good to see that have a new lease of life and um, the song Nuclear deals with his grandfather's experience during World War One, and yeah it's it, it's, it's really uh, cohesive you know the band are really tight, and you wouldn't tell that you couldn't tell that Mike Oldfield wasn't really um, in attendance of the sessions. I mean, he 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 used Skype and social networking, I believe, to uh, bring all the sessions together. Uh, although the original demo tapes were in uh, were done at his his house in the Bahamas. So yeah. Um, I think the the motivation really behind this album was the fact that he, you know, he realised he's still got a big following out there. Um, after playing an incredible gig at the London twenty twelve Olympics, and yeah, it's it's nice to see that he's still out there producing material. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the, um. Because there's, there's three different editions, I think. Uh, there's the uh, normal album, just all the just the eleven tracks. Um, the deluxe edition and the super deluxe. Now, uh, 
the, the this two on the deluxe edition has just instrumental versions of the uh, the tracks, which is interesting to hear actually because um, you know you get to hear some of the more uh, instrumental sections and those do stand out, whereas obviously the vocals cover them on the original album. Um, and then there's um, demo editions of all of the tracks, which really, I, I suppose, sound almost as good as the finished product. So, in my personal view, it's probably only worth getting the original album, unless you're a complete anorak and want to hear how the album was made and the, the processes within it. So yeah, it's, it's it's really a shame. I mean, he's he's clearly working towards more radio-friendly stuff, and it's a shame that you know we're not in a different era. You know, we'd hear these on the radio. You know, tracks like "Sailing," perfectly serviceable. But the album did did quite well. You know, in Europe, I believe that on some of the charts, like the Czech charts, the German albums and Polish. Spanish albums chart, you know, it peaked in at the top five. Even on the UK albums chart, it was uh, one of the charts there. It, it reached number twelve, so so very good, and it's been generally received positively. Um, in fact, the Guardian called it, I think, it, uh, quoted it saying a curious but likable diversion from his multi-layered New Age work. So there you go. And um, I think the track Nuclear went on to be used in the um, trailer for the stealth action game Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, so it's good to see that you know this kind of music is still appreciated. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to be a relative. This has been a relatively quick episode, and I shall get through as many as possible. It's been great to talk about this record. It's been a long time coming. I've really listened to this and toiled over this album many, many times. So, on that note, it's a goodbye from me.